Hello everybody, it's Chris Sims here from ComicsAlliance.com and this is the Comics Alliance Top 10. This week, we're talking about the worst haircuts in comics. And when I say comics, I specifically mean American superhero comics, because let's be honest here. If we were talking about the worst haircuts in manga, I would be here literally all day. Getting us started at number 10, it's Norman Osborn, whose strange two-tone hair has been a source of consternation and genuine concern for over 40 years. Like, what exactly is going on on that dude's head? Forget about what's going on in that dude's head where he thinks he's some kind of goblin monster who wants to destroy Spider-Man. What's happening up top? Are those ridges? Is he half tiger? I don't know. It's very concerning and very upsetting. But the only reason that it's number 10 on this list is because I actually saw a dude who had this hair in real life. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little freaked out. Clocking in at number 9, we have a relatively obscure Batman villain, Magpie. Now again, the strange triple mohawk fins that she's rocking might seem like they should be a little higher on this list. I mean, those those bald stripes aren't really doing anyone a favor. It's She's kind of like Hawk from the Road Warriors from the WWF. You, you all know about the Road Warriors, right? Anyway, there are a couple reasons that I'm only putting her at number 9. First of all, in the original appearance of Magpie, this hair was revealed to be a wig that actually covered up her normal, everyday, regular hairstyle. But when she comes back, it's actually her hair. And I gotta say, it's really impressive that she would do that, even if that story is mostly notable because Jason Todd accidentally takes her top off and she gets away when he's covering his eyes. Comics! At number 8, we have Long Shot and quite possibly the perfect mullet I have ever seen. This is the platonic ideal of a mullet. It is the best possible mullet, but it's still definitely a mullet with a weird poofy top. Now, whether or not Longshot is business up front and a party in the back is for someone who reads a lot more X-Men comics than I do to determine, but there's nothing that says, hey, this character was created in 1985, quite like that haircut. In recent years, he's gotten away from it a little bit, but still, this was what made it to the animated series, so it's the one that I'll always remember. Such a perfect, perfect mullet. While we're in the X-Men corners of the universe, let's talk about Adam X, the Extreme, who has the ponytail with the weird dreadlock braids going on. Sometimes they're dreadlocks, sometimes they're braids. There's only four of them. The rest of his hair is completely silky smooth. Now, originally I was going to give this slot to Shatterstar, a fellow X character with some dubious hair choices. But Adam X takes that slot for one reason and one reason only. The baseball cap. You never see that dude without the baseball cap. I think it counts as part of his hairstyle, and it could not be more backwards. Even if that mullet that Longshot has says this character was created in 1995, you would never doubt that Adam X, the extreme, the man with the power to electrify your blood, but only if you're already bleeding, which is why he's covered in spikes and carries swords, is from that greatest decade in comics, the 90s. At number six, we have Guy Gardner and the bowl cut that that dude rocked for way too long. Eventually got a pretty respectable coiffure, but for a long, long time, this was Guy's signature look. In fact, it's the signature look that he has on Batman the Brave and the Bold. So every time you're going to see Guy Gardner in animation, this is what he's going to look like. Now, why exactly this guy would have this haircut for that long, I don't know. But I can tell you, Guy's kind of supposed to be a dickhead as a character. And I think they went kind of literal with that. Sorry to work blue, everybody. At number five, we have Johnny Storm and the Skateboard Sling. Oof, this thing. I actually couldn't remember what issues this appeared in, so I asked on Twitter, hey, does anyone know what issues of Fantastic Four have Johnny Storm with the really bad haircut? That's all I said. Four seconds later, someone said, oh, it's FF285. They were correct. Everyone remembered exactly what story and exactly what haircut I was talking about. The weird thing about this is that this was not an uncommon haircut at the time. I'm pretty sure it's what John Connor has in Terminator 2. Only way shorter, way more severe on the Human Torch. At number 4, we have a controversial choice, I'm sure, Wolverine. 
Now, I'm not gonna lie, folks, I like Wolverine. And one of the things that I like about Wolverine is that if you take his mask off, his hair is the same shape as his mask. That is amazing. I love it. I love it so much. Can you imagine if that was a thing that happened to all superheroes, though? Like, what if Batman had two giant hair points? Why doesn't Batman have two giant hair points? Anyway, what I'm saying is, it's a great haircut. Until you get to that time he was Feral Wolverine with the Bone Claws, and it just got completely out of control. It was too much hair. Too much hair. There was Medusa from the Inhumans levels of hair going on with Feral Wolverine, and nobody needs that. Nobody has time for that. Nobody wants that much hair on Wolverine. Unless you count the people who were actually drawing Wolverine at the time. I, I guess they wanted Wolverine to have that much hair. Joe Maggiorero, I guess, wanted Wolverine to be kind of hairy. Have that. It's too much hair. It's too much hair. At number three, we have the haircut that many people assumed would just default to number one on this list. The Super Mullet. Now, for those of you who may not remember, back in the 90s, Superman was killed by Doomsday. Except that he wasn't really killed, nor was he actually replaced by four different Superman. Instead, he was just sort of knocked into a Kryptonian coma. And when he came back, he had long hair. Because they're had been no one to cut his super hair, I guess. Now, I actually don't hate this haircut as much as a lot of other people do, and I think a reason for that is because I was like 14 when I was reading these comics. I don't think it's a great look. What really bothers me about it is that Clark Kent also has long hair at this time. He wears a ponytail. Superman uh, just rocks with the, uh, the free-flowing mullet and the S-curl that is now down to his chin. But, like, if... I'll, look, I'll give you the glasses. You can have the glasses. But you can't have both those dudes walking around with long hair at the same time. It's, it's not gonna work that way. Boo to you, Super Mullet. Now, the, I think the best thing to come out of the Super Mullet was an issue of Hitman, where uh, Garth Ennis and John McRae had Tommy Monaghan signing a petition to get Superman to cut his hair. Apparently DC listened, because Superman chopped it all off when he got married, and then became Electric Blue Superman. It's, he had a rough decade. So what's worse than Superman with a mullet? Well, at number two, Lex Luthor with a mullet. This was another complicated plot. Uh, see, Lex Luthor, who, as we know, is bald, generally speaking, killed himself by exposing himself to kryptonite radiation and giving himself cancer, but he had a backup plan in the form of a backup body. Lex Luthor II. Lex Luthor cloned his body, pretended to be Australian, and his own son, and came back to run his company. And as you might expect from a guy who was very self-conscious about being bald, he luxuriated in having the longest, reddest hair possible. This dude looks like a red-headed Abraham Lincoln, but with longer hair. It's not, it's not flattering. This haircut, by the way, this was when he was dating Supergirl. Now, of course, this was when Supergirl was a strange alien being from a pocket dimension where Superman killed some Kryptonians, but I, it's a rough decade, guys. It's a really, really rough decade. So who takes the crown for the worst haircut in superhero comics history? Look no further than number one on our list, Jericho from the Teen Titans. Yeah, Justin Timberlake from the 90s would look great with mutton chops. This is apparently what George Perez was thinking when he designed this character for New Teen Titans, the son of Deathstroke the Terminator. And it's, it's bad. I'm not a fan of Jericho's design in general, with the, the vest and the medallion and the, the turtleneck and whatever, whatever else is going on there, but this haircut... Good lord, the mutton chops on display in New Teen Titans. I'm pretty sure that, that Terry Long, who would marry Donna Troy, had uh, the weird mutton chops and the, the weird JT curls as well. Now, Jericho would eventually get a slightly different hairstyle when he had a curly mullet and mutton chops. Really awful. I would say the worst haircut in superhero comics history. But that's just me. Maybe you have a haircut that you think is even worse than the ones we have on this list. If you do, go ahead and leave a comment at comicsalliance.com or hit me up on Twitter. I'm at the ISB. That's T-H-E-I-S-B. This has been the Comics Alliance Top 10 Worst Haircuts in Superhero Comics. Thank you all for watching. We'll be back next week with another Top 10 list.